Hey everyone, it's been a while and I want to pick up on a series that I started back in September. Sorry. Um, where I started introducing like, these are the settings for ACC that you need to do. This is how the tires work and how you need to adapt the pressure to get it on point in different weather scenarios. And I think one very important point in the game is aerodynamics. And I want to explain it as simple as possible. You don't have to be an engineer to understand and there's a few very easy principles that you can follow to understand this. Maybe you can hear this already. This is the plane in the background. I think the only track that has a plane is Donington. Um, I took Donington because it, because it has these medium to fast speed corners where aerodynamics play a big role. And also because it's the shortest track and we'll have the quickest lap time to see changes in car behavior and have quick results in, in our tests. So what I want to talk about is the aerodynamics then. And what you basically need to know in order to get this right in the game. And you don't have to be super smart, it's very simple. First principle is, the closer the car is to the ground, the more downforce it generates. There is, however, a front end of the car and there is a rear end of the car. Or if the car stands the other way around, the front is here, the rear is there. Never mind. What you want to understand though is, uh, you can impact the front separately from the rear from the rear and uh, this will change the balance of the car right so you can change how much downforce you'll have on the front and how much you'll have on the rear and your main factors for that are the right height some cars have a splitter that you can adjust and all cars have a rear wing you can adjust these are the parts so let's swap over to the game and have a look at the options that we have available, okay? And to get a rough understanding, let's go to the setup. Let's take the aggressive preset. Let's not focus on any of that. Let's just go to the aerodynamic section. And the first thing, well, I don't know what first would be best, but let's say, let's talk about this aerodynamic balance indicator down there. And it's really not more than an indicator. And very importantly, this number only works within one particular car. You can't take this number and compare it to another car. A positive value here does not mean the car is oversteery and a negative value does not mean the car is understeery. Within the single within within a single car though, you can say the more positive a balance is, the more oversteery the car is, the more negative the number is, the more understeery the car is. But also of course, um, let's say when 2.3%, let's assume this is a balanced car, then 3% will be more oversteery, 1% will be more understeery, okay? And on other cars, maybe on the audio, so you have always a negative balance or let's say a negative indicator. It doesn't mean the car is understeery. It just means whatever. So just take each of these uh, numbers within a particular car and not compare it across cars, all right? So first thing, you want to find out is how sensitive is this car, okay? And usually you'll have the mid-engine cars and the Porsche very sensitive to aerodynamic changes, whereas the um, front-engine cars and cars with long wheelbases should not be particularly sensitive to right height changes. So what we can see and what you want to find out is what car am I dealing with, okay? So we have the Aston V8 here and uh, Always have to look over or under the wheel here, so mind, don't mind my uh, movement. Let's change the ride height on the front, okay? And check the error balance, error, error balance number down there. 55 now, one millimeter up, and we lose, or re the number changes by 0.2 of a percent. Let's move another millimeter, uh, 0.4 of a percent. Another millimeter, 0.3 of a percent, another millimeter, 0.5 of a percent, okay? So there's, something around 0.3, 0.5% change per millimeter change of front right height. Doesn't necessarily have to be linear, okay? Let's go back to where it was in the aggressive preset. Now let's do the same on the rear right height and let's see how much of a percentage change we get for that. So let's go up a millimeter first and the change is, okay, 0.2 of a percent. Another millimeter, 0.1 of a percent, another millimeter, 0.2. So I guess it will be something like 0.15 or so, because I guess it's averaging out and, and rounding the numbers, which just tells you when the front 
um, has a change of almost 0.3 to 0.5, so let's say 0.4 on average, and the rear only has 0.15, then the front end of the car is more sensitive to ride height changes than the rear end of the car. Does it make sense so far? I guess. Now let's see what the rear wing does. One click, 0.6 of a percent, another click, 0.5 of a percent, 0.6, uh, oh, we're maxed out, and let's say you see in the other direction, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.5. So I guess it's something around 0.6 here, okay? So when you want to change the balance of the car now on the S and you say, okay, this is too oversteery for me, you can either say, let's take the front up by a millimeter and get this um, 0.2% change. If you think it's really oversteery, Maybe you want to make a different change and just add a click of rear wing and you get a much bigger balance change in the car, okay? Um, or you could say, well, this is so oversteer, I don't want a much change. Um, I don't want to raise the front because I don't want to take the downforce away there. I just want to have more downforce on the rear because there is no long straight here. Um, we can sacrifice a bit of high speed. Um, so let's make the rear a bit lower or so. Um, tiny change to the aerodynamics there, okay? Just the principles. Now, um, let's just drive a lap and see how this um, aggressive preset here works on the track. Go, go, go. Um, normal hot lap temperatures that I always use, so we're having 23, 28 degrees, 11 a.m. Well, you could use a cloudy preset, or if you get depressed from all the grayness, you can use 18% clouds and 21 degrees. However, let's see how the car behaves, let's check how aggressive it really is. Okay, I can I can turn in. Acceleration shows a bit of oversteer there. But overall feels neutral into the first corner. Let's see the next one, which is a bit more downforce heavy. As soon as I, I touch the brake a bit, I can feel the front goes down a bit. I can see feel the balance changes a bit. And I'll explain to you why once we're on the back straight and break before the chicane. Oops, overcooked it a bit. It's a bit on the steer view on the exit, okay. There's the plane. And another hard braking zone for the chicane. Here, let's see how the balance is. Okay, I heard the car scraping the ground a little in some scenarios, but overall around the track, not too much ground collision, so I guess front ride height is more or less fine from a bottoming out perspective. Last corner ahead, let's just finish the lap real quick. One nasty corner. And across the line, let's not look too much at the lap time right now. It's really just adjusting, um, perceiving the car behavior, okay? And now let's just make um, a big change with just a little click or so. And therefore, let's add rear wing. So now the balance should have changed. And maybe it goes from this neutral to much more understeer now. So let's drive again. Come on. And I'll just do two, three corners because that should already be enough to feel this balance change. Oops. Should have shifted up. Okay, the rear is now already going away less, but the corner doesn't really serve as a good indicator because it's a bit slow for the aerodynamics to have much of an impact. This is much more interesting and I can already feel the rear is much less likely to rotate around me here. Okay, just this, this corner now, I think, and then this should serve as a good idea already how the balance has changed. And this just, just that single click, I think had a huge impact already on the car and it's much more stable. So if you perceive the aggressive preset to be a bit too aggressive for you, add a click of rear wing, car changes quite a lot and you might be already fine. 
and if you break at the right point, you'll make the corner. However, what I want to show you now additionally is, before we do that actual change, let's go five seconds back. So this is before the car is breaking. Um, let's just toggle the HUD and change the camera and move to the outside of the car. Bring it to the middle, just hoping you can see everything. Oops, move my camera in the right place. So what we want to talk about then is, as I told you before, the right height defines how the downforce is, okay? So the closer the car is to the ground, the more downforce it generates. Um, and let's just keep it simple. The closer the front is to the ground, the more downforce is generated there. The closer the rear is to the ground, the more downforce is generated there. So just for the right height, front to rear, you can um, control the balance, the aerodynamic balance of the car. Now, if we slow it down a bit, you will see, just check how much the gaps are at the front and the rear, okay? So roll it forward, the braking zone is coming now. Just look at the front and how the gap changes towards the ground. So car is going into the brakes now, there you go. And the car is going closer to the ground at the front and I think you can see visually already that the gap at the rear is bigger now. So we have right height changes while the car is driving. And I'd say this is quite a lot even, it was probably more than a than one or two millimeters or so. So we'll have quite a dynamic behavior of a car around the track, which is means the downforce balance changes and all this value in the pit box of 2.3% or 1.9% or whatever we have there is going to be quite different in different situations on the track. So in this scenario, we'll probably have an error balance, which is something like four or 5%, okay? So just just something to keep on the back of your mind that the car isn't always the same as you set it up in the pits, okay? It's a dynamic process around the whole track in different areas. So when cornering, the car leans to a side and depending on what the weight uh, distribution is on the car, the front goes closer to the ground from just the cornering forces or the rear goes closer to the ground and your balance always changes, just to keep that in mind. And this whole dynamic process you can control as well without doing too much to the balance here. And so therefore, I just wanna go back to the balance that we just had, which was the 2.3%. And I wanna now have a car that is, let's say much more oversteery. So what I would do then is, and let's overdo it way too much, okay? We go to the mechanic section because this defines the whole dynamic process of controlling the aero base, okay? And we're thinking solely in aerodynamics now, nothing else. So what I wanna have now is, to allow the front a lot more movement because this is what the bump stop range here mainly defines. So let's think of it as this is the bump stop range that the car can have. Okay. So and let's say this is a bump stop range of zero. There's very little movement. This is a very large bump stop range of say 50 or so or 30. I don't know what the car can actually do. And this is the bump stop range of seven. So this is the movement that is allowed on the front axle there, okay? Additionally, you have the bump stop rate. And this is this, like my upper hand would be, uh, sorry, the, my upper hand would be the bump stop. So you hit that rubber at the end of the suspension travel. And if that rubber is soft, what you'll have is once you hit it, it's gonna give in a bit, okay? It moves a bit, it allows a little more movement, but then at some point it stops. And if you make that really hard, so say 2,500 Newton here, then this is gonna be much more rock solid, okay? If you make it super soft, again, it will move more. Then the, the, well, the third thing where you can influence this kind of dynamic behavior is the real rate, real rate. So make it super stiff. And then in this range here, without hitting the bump stop, the movements will be a lot harder to do, okay? Which means in the end, under braking, you will have less movement within the allowed range. Make it really soft and the car will move a lot more in this allowed range and will much more easily hit the bump stop. Very easy principles there, okay? Um, so now what I wanna have is a car that is way more oversteery without even touching the aerodynamic balance in the setup screen here. So what I wanna do then is increase the bump stop range. Let's take the maximum. So we go from this now, we go to this distance that the suspension is allowed to move. Additionally, we make the bump stop a lot softer. So should we hit the bump stop, it's gonna move more, okay? So we're getting this kind of behavior. So we get the standard travel and additional travel. There I am from the bump stop. Additionally, let's make the front wheel rate harder. So we also influence this range here to be easier. So again, we're getting a lot of movement of the front axle now. It's going to be something like this, more of a boat. 
Just to make this behavior even more pronounced, let's limit the rear travel a lot. So we get the opposite effect on the rear axle. Let's do, uh, let's do five, okay? I'm overdoing it a bit and let's make the bumps to break really hard. So what we get on the rear axle now, there's this much travel, this, and then the bump stop is really hard. So as soon as we get there, the rear isn't allowed to move anymore. Let's make the suspension one click stiffer as well. So also in this zone without hitting the bump stop, the car is going to be yeah, less likely to move. So we'll have a situation now where under braking, the front is allowed to move a lot, come a lot closer to the ground. And the rear on the opposite, uh, when going through the corner, or when accelerating is allowed to move much less, okay? So we'll, in the end, have a dynamic behavior of the car that is solely gonna be dynamic on the front, not so dynamic on the rear. And this should be really, really oversteering now without having touched the aerodynamic balance in the setup there. So let's drive once more. And I do this on the Aston to start with because the Aston overall is not that sensitive to rake that we're now getting, basically. So in this corner, probably not likely to feel, but when I get on power, I guess the harder spring and the rear not being allowed to squat down as much is going to cause a bit of a, yeah, dynamic difference now in the car behavior. So now I turn in. Uh, it's fine till here, but I can definitely feel I need to do much less on the steering wheel to get the car to rotate. And for this next corner, I expect to almost spin out, I guess. Yeah, the, the, the car is much more lively under braking now. And all, it's easier to stay in the track there with the same speed, but the rear is really loose now. And we'll see this another time here, I guess. As I say, the Aston is quite tolerant of that, okay? And that's why you see a lot of Aston setups in the end having a lot of rake and a high wing to counter it. And let's try the braking zone here. If we can see a visual difference, I'm not quite sure. Okay, this should do. Um, so you'll have to rely on my, my message here is that now I need to turn way less on the steering wheel to get the car to rotate because the rear is much more lively now. The front is allowed to come closer to the ground, generate more downforce, whereas the rear is not allowed to do the same and therefore we will have less dynamic operation on the rear, less downforce changes on the rear, but much more um, uh, pronounced downforce changes on the front, which overall leads to a more oversteery car. Let's check the replay here at the very end. I just want to go into the braking zone and see if we're able to see the visual difference as well. So toggle this on, change the other camera and just so braking zone ahead. Let's go outside of the car. Let's check the right heights here and let's see if there is a visible change. I'm not entirely sure this is going to work. So moving forward, the brake is now starting. The car is pitching forward. And now I think, I think you're able to see that now the gap at the front might actually be closer than before. So we get a bigger change in this dynamic car behavior is more dynamic even, and we get bigger downforce changes throughout the lap. Okay. M might even close to scraping the ground there. So just to have shown that to you, now let's change the car that is more sensitive on the front. So in the essence, it kind of works out if we go or do something that extreme because overall it's tolerant to that kind of aerodynamic change. And also every click on the front right height doesn't have as much of an impact. So let's go to, well, actually I did the video once, but I forgot to record the audio. So uh, yeah, I did this and I chose the McLaren firstly because I have a nice livery here. And the other, I know the McLaren is much more sensitive, which usually all mid-engine cars, in particular the Porsche are. So now, if we choose the aggressive preset, go to the aerodynamics tab, you can also, the first thing you'll see is the error variation at the bottom is way different. But in the end, this is going to be a very balanced car, okay? And now we're just clicking our way to understanding what the car actually does. So let's change the front right head by a millimeter. And remember the Aston had like a 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4% change. Let's do a millimeter now. And we get a change of what, 0.8? of a percent, so almost twice as much as the Aston had a change. So the sensitivity to right height on the McLaren on the front 
is much higher than the sensitivity to right height on the front is for the Aston. Let's do another millimeter and suddenly we have a 9% uh, error balance at the front. Another click, we almost have 10%. So just with three clicks, we can move the error balance almost three full percent, whereas three clicks on the Aston would be 1.2%, something around that, okay? So without touching this actual balance here, if we make the same change that we just did on the Aston, and you can see that uh, this is also a bit uh, different here, having this dynamic behavior influenced by, by the, all this here should have a more pronounced effect on the McLaren. And that's why you'll also see that the bump stop range here that is in the aggressive preset is much smaller. The bump stop rate is harder. Overall, the real weight is a bit stiffer because the car is so sensitive to ride height changes in these dynamic scenarios, okay? Um, let's write it as is though for a couple corners, just to give myself an idea and you an idea how the car behaves. But usually the aggressive presets of Kunos aren't actually that aggressive, so it should be fine. Trail braking much needed needs to be much more pronounced here, but also because the brake bias is way too much to the front. Anyway, let's keep everything as is. Okay, I can turn in, I can wait, the rear comes a tiny bit, but very much controllable. No big issue here to drive the car, apparently. Let's see for the next corner, which is more aero heavy. Uh, already bottoming out there. Okay, rear comes a bit, but no issue, nothing to be worried about. Just put the power down and the car goes around here. Yeah, even if I go off throttle, it starts to rotate a bit, but not too much. All very much predictable still. Okay, there it comes a bit more, but easy. Just wait a bit, let the car rotate, regain the grip, and then you can go. Let's see in this harsh braking zone here for the chicane, how it behaves. Okay, it doesn't like bumps too much, small drift there. Fine, okay, overall, drivable, I guess. Doesn't need too much change. You can probably do a more or less decent lap here. Let's, however, see how sensitive it is. And again, I don't wanna change the aerodynamic balance here. I only wanna influence the dynamic side. So we're gonna make the front softer as we did with the Aston. We're gonna lower the bump stop range to, well, let's take the minimum and let's see how this goes and increase the bump stop range just to, you know, get this effect of this being softer hitting the bump stop to last longer. So we have more range on the front, the downforce, um, the, the right height on the front is going to change more. And um, the bump stop itself is going to give in more. So we have even more right height changes dynamically. And let's increase the bump stop range to, oh, this is going to be a lot. We'll probably scrape the ground a bit. So let's not go too far. We did 23 or so. Not that this is linear or we know what the bump stop range click, what each click really is. Could be 0.1 of a millimeter, could be 0.2, could be four millimeter. We don't know. And you could go into molding and figure all this stuff out, but let's not do it for now, okay? Um, and um, let's lower the rear by just a bit. Let's not allow the rear too much squat. So we do the same thing on the Aston. We limit rear travel to make the rear um, less dynamic in the sense that the downforce on the rear changes less throughout the lap. And we make the opposite on the front, apparently. Okay, so let's make this harder here as well. One, two, three, one, two, three. And now the car, I guess, will become a lot more oversteery just be because we allow the front to do more change in various scenarios. And because the car is more sensitive to right height changes on the front, we'll get a way more pronounced balance change in various situations around the track. So I expect the rear to be more lively now, going into the first corner. I expect the car to rotate with more, with less steering input in, in downforce heavy corners. Let's see. So I'm turning now and you can almost visually see already that the rotation is becoming a bit more. It's still somewhat drivable in the slow corner, but let's see the heavy braking into the quick corner here now. And there, there it comes, okay? So this was, this is probably already next to undrivable. 
And just because we allowed more travel on the front, we didn't change something in the aero section of the car. We just affected... Yeah, I, I don't even dare to turn in because the car is now so oversteering. And I worked it out here. And of course, I want to show it a bit more than, than it would actually be there. But the car is just way more lively now on the rear, much harder to control. Yeah, and here it's it's virtually un undrivable. As soon as you do a steering input, the rear is coming around. Because the front is now much closer to the ground. And the aerodynamic balance changes to, let's say, these from, from the 7.5% that we started with to something like 10 or 11 or 12 even under braking. And the rear is going to be really loose. The front produces a lot of downforce. Undrivable. Let's do one more experiment, though. Because I told you there's these different factors how, how you can influence a car, right? So now we have this bump stop range was before on the McLaren was one. So very little movement here. The bump stop brake was rather stiff. So running into this doesn't allow a lot of movement as well. But we now increase the bump stop range to this. So we have a lot of movement now. We made the bump stop itself softer. So going into the bump stop will lead to bigger right height changes. And we made the real weight softer, which means in this zone, more movement is allowed. What we're gonna change now is just the wheel rate. So we're gonna take the front axle and make this part here very, very stiff so that there's not too much travel allowed from the spring itself. So let's max it out, okay? That's like four or five clicks more, almost, I think we almost, yeah, not doubled it, but quite a bit more. And this should bring back some of the lost balance that we had and the car should become more understeering now, more tamed. Ignoring all the mechanical side effects of having these hard springs, we're only talking about aerodynamics. So let's do another run with that. And now we should counter all these um, issues that we caused by the larger bump stop range and the softer bump stop. Of course, it has other effects, but we're ignoring these for this particular video. So I can turn in here now. The rear kind of works with me instead of against me. Didn't have to correct any oversteer. Didn't have to fear the car. Let's see for this one. Yeah, I mean, I can turn in. Okay, okay. So without touching the aerodynamic balance in the menu, and by only changing the car in these dynamic scenarios, okay, the rear's still there, okay, kind of was wants to get away from me, but you can, I can still tame it. There you go, all fine. Just for making the front stiffer, allowing less trouble in these dynamic situations, I now have a car that suddenly is drivable again, even though we have a huge range of. Uh, travel on the front that we allow. Okay. So overall, much more stable. I think you can you can get the idea, right? Um, and I think this is already all I want to talk about in this video. So when you think about this aerodynamic balance, think in how much of a percentage change each millimeter has on the car. So in this instance here, we almost have a full percent of each millimeter on the front axle, whereas was less than half the sensitivity on the Aston. On the rear end here, however, just 0.1 of a percent change. So you can see the rear end is much less sensitive to these right height changes. And then you have the rear wing, which is similar to, to the Aston there, okay? So you have all these factors, but you don't necessarily have to change something here in the aerodynamic section. You can just also as much get a different car behavior in these dynamic situations if you touch the wheel rate, if you touch the bump, bump stop range, uh, rate and the bump stop range. And I hope this got you an idea of how these factors play together. And um, I'll say goodbye with my Sunday face. Have a good weekend, everyone. Uh, enjoy the F1 race. And yeah, post in the comments what you think. If this is helpful, put your questions on Discord or comments. And yeah, that's it. Bye, guys.